For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the Friday afternoon service of April the 5th, 1996, of the Passover camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. The coffees will be speaking this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Well, glory. Somebody told me to rebuke the spirit of heaviness, of tiredness. Anybody who's tired, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We lose life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Well, glory. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Praise to Jesus. Well, I told, I told Brother Jack before he left, I met him at the door over there, and I said, uh, Brother Jack, if you have finished that sermon this afternoon, I'll ask Brother Glenn if you let me sit down and listen. <laughs> he said, i got to go. I sure did hate to see him go, because I wanted to hear the rest of that. He started last night. I told, told them, I said, I, do, I teach deliverance all the time. I know what I'm going to say, but I won't know what he was going to say. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I really don't know what I'm going to say this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> well, I got it. Some, I want to give, but, but I have promised the devil that I'm going to tell on him for what he's done. So I'm going to tell you. I told him what he, the Word says, that... All things work together for the good, for those that love the Lord, for those that are called according to His purpose. And I've had a, I'm having a chance to experience that with my family. Now, I made a remark last night, I'd pray for my son. And so I've got to tell this because I told the devil when he, he was doing this to my boy that at first I tried to cover up for him and, uh, to not hurt the people he had ministered to. See, he's a minister, he's an ordained minister, and uh, he had gone forth and worked in the mission in Memphis, uh, worked with a lot of uh, street people. And in fact, we worked with street people also. And he had helped many of them. But he stopped getting deliverance. He was delivered. I love this boy, man. He's a, he's a boy. He's 51 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And so, uh, but uh, the devil has just done a number on him. He, he uh, was in drugs and alcohol. I've told this before, and some of you probably heard it, so I'm going to tell it again. I'm not going to throw it, but I want to tell you that the Lord saved him, brought him out of the drugs and the alcohol, and put him in the ministry. He went to Bible school and did the whole nine yards, but he, he received quite a bit of deliverance, but never for the root cause. The strong man, we got the grass off, you know, like you cut your yard. I always tell people this is the way... Um, some deliverance is you like cutting my grass. I keep my yard up and I go out at least once a week in the summertime, twice a week, and run my lawnmower. And I cut it off and it comes right back up. Well, he got this type of delivery. And then he, when he began to work in the ministry uh, at the mission, the devil totally deceived him because he said, I can't receive deliverance and work on people. They can't know that I need deliverance. I said, well, you're not deceiving anybody but yourself. Everybody else can look at you and tell you need deliverance. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you. We only deceive ourselves when we think nobody knows we've got a problem. So he didn't get rid of it. And so he's been drawn back into it, the whole thing, drugs and alcohol. He's left the ministry. It's like he just left God. God gave, has given me the scripture of the prodigal son that he will return to the Father's house. And last week, I don't hear from him anymore. He usually calls me every Saturday up until he got into the alcohol again and then the drugs. And But he has a sister who lives in Florida that keeps tabs on him, and she reports to me. And, and, the, and the Lord told me last Saturday morning, I got up, and I, I turned that in a fear of my kids. Can you believe it? I was trying that in during their life. But anyway, the Lord said, call the missions and get them to pray. And I did. Uh, I did the phone call. And then I called him. And when I talked to him on the phone, he had a thick tongue. And I knew what it was. And I was really praying. And I was so mad at the devil 
And I told the devil, I said, I'd protected him because I didn't want the people he administered to to be hurt. You see, this is our reasoning because of him having gone back in it. And the Lord told me, he said, you tell it, you tell it, just like it is. And I spent like Sunday night, and I spent about 30 minutes telling exactly what had happened to him, talking to missing people. And the Lord showed me that if I don't tell it, and I, I told the devil when, I, when the Lord showed me this, I'm going to tell it if I get to say anything at Lake Hamilton, get it on the tapes, so it'll go out all over the country. If anybody takes the tape home, they're going to take it home and tell people to get rid of all those demons. Don't stop. Don't, don't just get the top off. Get the root, the strong man. The Lord spoke to me the other day when we, I was praying about a situation, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, all you've been doing is ministering to all the spirits you see there, but you're not getting a strong man. He said, next time you pray for that individual, you call the strong man itself up, and you minister deliverance to him, to that thing. And I, I haven't done it yet because I haven't ministered to the person, but I intend to do it. It's time we go after the root cause and stop getting the symptoms. Right. When doc, uh, doctors, babies, he doesn't go after symptoms. He goes after what puts the symptoms on the child. I'm sure. Because if you just put rid of the symptoms, they'd still have that wouldn't go away. But I want you to know, uh, we and the ladies this meeting this afternoon, Irma was, Sister Irma was asking everybody to tell what they were uh, compulsive. I call it addiction, addicted to. And, and you know, girls, I, I'm ashamed of you. You didn't really tell the truth. You were afraid your symptoms would be worse than somebody else's. And you need to be honest with the Lord. God already knows. But we're so afraid we'll be condemned, you know, the whatever we've got. And by the way, it's not catching. You can't catch it from somebody next to you unless they transfer spirits. But what you need to do is say, Lord, I want these things out. Be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. But I want you to know that my son is still in alcohol and still in drugs. He knows deliverance and he does an anointing on him. God spoke to him just like he spoke to Samuel. He called him that way. And he ministered in deliverance and had a powerful anointing to, 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 to just see what the demons were. And, and people got delivered. And the devil pulled him out of it. And God gave me this message that I'm going to share this afternoon because a lot of us, of covering up the problems in our lives and thinking nobody knows. And what I want you to be aware of, that if you've got something in there that has you've had trouble with, if you don't get rid of it, one day it might bring you back into it. And I was asking the Lord about this. He gave me, the, he gave me um, Balaam. I was saying, Lord, why is it that people won't get free from it? And he said, because there are Always comforters that come to you and tell you, you know, you don't really need deliverance, you're okay. You can stand and you're okay. Read, go study Balaam's life. He was a prophet of God, was he not? Yeah. And he, he spoke a powerful prophecy on the coming of the Lord Jesus. And he wanted acceptance, he wanted power, and he wanted money. And he, went, he would go before God. He wanted, uh, Balak wanted uh, him to curse God's people. And he kept bugging God. And you know the story. And he ended up, and the scripture tells us that he, and the scripture called him, what was it? A soothsayer. He got totally into witchcraft. And that tells me that if a prophet of God that walked with the Lord and heard from the Lord would not listen to the Lord... <coughs> See, he was wooed right into, into what he came, became. And these spirits in us, if we don't get rid of them, can cause us to turn our backs on God. You say, no, not me, not me, boy, not me. We really need to read the Word and see what happens when we don't, when we think, what does the Scripture say? Take heed when you think you stand up to fall. So, Brother Glenn got on my Scripture last night. I thought he was going to preach it. I'm, I'm going to share this, this afternoon some of the things in the area of what he usually shares on the, the being sealed by the as an overcomer. Okay. I don't think we're, she's come as forceful, as forceful as she needs to on what she's been telling you. Our son did everything he could to serve God after he hit bottom. He became a minister. He went to Christ for the National College, stayed two years, and he worked for them for two years on the grounds 
after he had completed his courses. He came back to Memphis and was second in command of the mission that started in Memphis and started one in Dallas, there's one now in Fort Worth, there's one in Atlanta, and now they're starting one in Nashville. It's growing proud. And he was second in command. I mean, he was right at the top. And they convinced not only him, but all of their people that when you stand in the office of pastor or leader, you don't show the need for deliverance because the other people will think uh, harshly of you and that uh, if, if you need deliverance. So he stopped getting his deliverance. He had received a lot of it and become a minister. And then he reverted right back to where he came from. You know the scripture. In Peter, it talks about a hog going back to his wallet. A dog going back to his vomit. Well, this is exactly what happened to our son. Now, we don't like to tell this. But if it will help one person, I think that it will do the work that we intend for it to do. You need to get rid of those things that are in you because they will draw you right back into where you came from. And uh, that's that's the portion of our of her message today that about our own family. She has a message from the Lord. Scripture, and I'll not interrupt her on that, but I think we needed to get a little stronger on what's actually happened in the natural if you don't get rid of your demons. They will really come back to you. I would really like to sometimes just give his testimony from my side, you know, from what I know about it, how the Lord brought him in, and how the Lord uh, saved him. He said, We never, when he, he had made uh, over a million dollars back in the early 80s, and Lost it all through drugs. He was in real estate and ended up coming home destitute. Stayed with us for almost a year. And the Lord told me not, and I'll tell you this, ladies, the Lord told me not to preach to him. And I didn't. The Lord told me to love him. And I loved him. We loved him into the kingdom. And he, even when he stayed with us, he would go. I was giving him money every day to buy his little, he didn't have any money things that he needed and I found out you know, he'd go into town and use it for beer and uh, he'd come in one night he would, he would wait till we'd go to bed and he'd come in and uh, he'd go upstairs he'd keep his house he'd go upstairs to the bedroom but one afternoon he came in we were fixing to eat dinner and he sat down and he cried and he said I can't live with you all I can't stay here he said no matter what I do you don't say anything about it <laughs> and I said but son we love you and he said, I know that, but I, and he just wept. And so he went on upstairs, and, and a couple of days later, um, we never asked him to go to church with him. He went to church. He said, man, you weren't very much. No, I was in the Lord. Because he said, love him. He said, don't preach to him, because he'll have an answer for anything you say. And uh, we were at church one Wednesday night, and the Lord saved him. Well, we, we, had, we couldn't even take credit for it. You know, well, I'll tell you this. The Lord didn't tell me I couldn't play my tape. <laughs> he didn't have my kind of scripture all over his bedroom. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things he, well, you can preach anyway, but praise the Lord. <laughs> you, you know, when the Lord opens the door, I just rush right in. But um, I praise God for, for what he did. And my heart brought his, I mean, I, I, I got free from the burden I was carrying for him Saturday when all the prayer went up. God did something. I don't know what God did, but I'm expecting a good report. Praise the Lord. Well, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. And I thank you for your mercy and your grace. And Lord, as we gather together this afternoon in the name of Jesus, we just ask you to give us hearing ears and seeing eyes and an understanding heart. Lord, let the word become reality within our lives. Let it work in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we just desire to walk closer to you. We desire to be free from every bondage that would hinder us from being filled with your presence being able to hear your voice more clearly. And, Father, we just ask now that you just do a mighty work in us. Yes, Father, we praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Satan, I speak to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I bind your power in the name of Jesus. You have no part in the law here. We have authority over you through the shed blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. And I bind any demon that would hinder or harass or, or try to stop anything that the Father wants to do in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you for your word. I bind witchcraft in the name of Jesus. I bind any witchcraft that's working in the name of Jesus and cut off its power in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you again for your word. I want to start this afternoon with uh, just uh, give you a scripture, which <clears throat> a couple of scriptures. My sister this morning was talking on the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to teach on the Holy Spirit, but I want to share these, and I know you know it. But in First First Corinthians chapter six, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And I brought another one just in case I have to read it out of it too. But uh, I want to read it out of this Amplified because it really makes it, some of these things very clear. In uh, 1 Corinthians 6, chapter uh, 6, verse 17. Let's see if I can read my own. own uh, no, excuse me. I want 6, um, 19. Do you not know that your body is a temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit? Who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God. You are not your own. You are bought with a price, purchased with a pre- preciousness, and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. And Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mis- mismated allowances with them or come under a different yoke with them inconsistent with your faith for what partnership have right living and right standing with god with iniquity and lawlessness or how can one light have fellowship with darkness how can light have fellowship with darkness what harmony can there be between christ and belial the devil or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever what agreement can there be between a temple of God and idols for we are the temple of the living God even as God said I will dwell in them and among them and will walk in them and with them with and among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people so the next verse says so come out from among them among unbelievers and separate sever yourself from them says the Lord and touch not any unclean thing then I will receive you kindly and treat you with favor and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty and one of the reasons I was reading this I want one more verse over in 1 Peter chapter uh, 4 and verse 17 for the time has arrived for judgment to begin with the household of God and if it begin with us, what will he? What will be the end of those who do not respect or believe or obey the good news, the gospel of God? We, the reason I wanted to use these scriptures this afternoon is to show, say, and everyone here that know, is born again, believing, and filled with the Holy Ghost, knows that your body is the temple of God. And some people say, well, the devil, uh, the uh, demons, and the Holy Spirit can't live in the same body. That's a lie of the devil. And God is telling us to cleanse our body. I, I started out with this sermon, and the Lord gave this to me uh, yesterday morning, was, uh, and I'm going over into Ezekiel, but I want you to know that as I was first, first hearing from the Lord on this, he was talking about the, the buildings, that we need to cleanse it. We need to get rid of the things that are not of God. You see, I preach a lot on Sunday night to uh, street people, and they come in, and y'all get mad at me if you want to, but I'm going to say it. With earrings hanging down to here, and all kinds of jewelry on, occult jewelry, and everything <clears throat> under the sun. And when you begin to tell them, hey, you need to clean up, you need to get those pierced earrings off. I don't hear any ter- much preaching anymore about things like this. But I have decided in a long time ago, and, and uh, somebody was talking about it, I don't remember who, that if nobody else goes on, I'm going on with the Lord. I'm going on. I'm not going to hell for nobody. I'm going on with the Lord. Whether my children go, whether my husband goes, or whether anybody goes. But I am going to be honest and preach what God has shown me about the Word. And we talk about we are God's children. And, and, and the very thing that He tells us to do in obedience, we don't do. He says to obey. I, I, I had a toss up. I wanted to preach on obedience because somebody mentioned a lot. It's why. You know what I saw in Lot's wife looking back? She desired the things she had left, and she didn't want to leave, and she wanted to go back. And God said, don't look back at the things you've walked away from. When you get rid of your garbage things, your things that God tells you that are abomination that you bring into your house, don't look back and say, look what I've lost. You say, praise God, Lord, is there anything else I need to get rid of? And we look back at the things and say, look at the things I've given up for the Lord. But what did he give up for us? 
he's called us to be a holy people. A lot of times there are very few people will walk in what they profess with their mouth. And it, it hurts my heart. And if it hurts me, how much more must it hurt our God? Well, Lord, I'm okay. I've been totally delivered. I haven't. I still get mad at my husband and criticize him. I have to pray a lot and ask forgiveness and call the stuff out. Oh, you don't do that? You don't criticize your wife and get mad at her? God said, love her. He told his wife, go by your husband. My husband said, don't do that. I don't do it. Because if I do it, I get in trouble. Not only with him, but with God. I tell you, it's time we begin to practice what we preach, what we say we're walking in. I want to find reality in, in, the, in God and God's people walking in what they say they're walking in. Go to Revelation chapter 8. I was telling Brother Tommy this morning, the, one of the, uh, I was telling about the spirit I ran into that told me, listen, he, these demons, some demons talk to me. We manifest demons and they talk to us. And, and one of them told me, he said, I asked him who he was, and he said, you dumb old woman. I thought, uh, I'm not going to agree with you. It's maybe true, but I'm not agreeing. I, I, I said, who are you? And he said, you read about me all the time in the book of Revelation. I said, I do to myself. Now, who, where have I been reading? He said, you've been in it just recently. You know who I am. And I thought, no, but I sure wish I did. And the Spirit of the Lord brought the word to me from chapter 8 and verse uh, the latter part of the chapter, Wormwood. I, I, I'm fixing to go some of the, use some more of the scriptures before I get to it. But the Lord brought this word to me. And so I was sitting there calling this thing off of her. And I said, you come out of her. You have no right there. In the name of Jesus. He said, I do have right here. I've been here since she was conceived in the womb. And he said, i got news for you. He said, he told me he wasn't a, a demon. I said, well, it sure looked like a demon to me. And uh, But when I, I looked this word up, wormwood up, in the concordance and in the dictionary, and it talked about calamity. Well, we had been having all kinds of calamities in our church. People were falling. They were having wrecks. The elderly man in our church got, got um, broadsided, going on the way home from church one night. And it was just one thing after another happening. And we found out it was coming from this spirit, this wormwood, which is, well, you can look it up. It's wormwood, it's bitterness, and all this stuff that works with it. So I wanted to know about it, and I was digging in this. And so then the Lord began to, to talk to me, and he said, look at this chapter and see what's ha- already happened and what's going to happen. And in verse um, I saw in verse 6, he said, Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them, and the first angel blew his trumpet, and there was a storm of hail and fire mingled with blood cast upon the earth, and a third part of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees was turned up, burned up, and, and all the green grass was burned up. And in the, in the scripture, in the Psalms, it talks about uh, us as uh, trees, people as trees. This also applies, goes back to uh, some of the uh, pestilence that came in, in Egypt. But uh, in Exodus chapter 9, and I want to flip over the whole, just stay where you are in, in, in Revelation. And let me go over to Exodus and read you something. Because the Lord gave this, showed this to me in, about the land of Goshen. We need to be in the land of Goshen. You say, well, I'm there. But you don't stay there. Uh, Exodus 9, verse 23, Then Moses stretched forth his rod toward the heavens, and the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire. Lightning ran down to and along the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire flashing constantly, continually in the midst of the weighty hail, and as such as had not been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck down throughout all the land of Egypt, everything that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail beat down all the vegetation of the field and and scattered every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen were the Israelites. Where the Israelites were, was there no hail. And God is saying that we need to be prepared for what's coming. Amen. And if we're full, the brother's going to share tomorrow on some of the things that's happening in our country today. 
when the things come about. If we're full of these things that are in us that wants to separate us from God, how many of you, and some of the mark of the beast, how many of you would be willing to stand? I know the, what this is, what he's going to say, but, but if it, it came to you, you're going to renounce Jesus Christ or die. How are you going to stand? Are you going to be able to say, go ahead. So I tell the demons when they said they're going to kill me, I said, go ahead. I'll go home and be with Jesus and I'll tell him you sent me. <laughs> are you going to be able to stand, get the things out of you, the fears out of you, get the, get the unbelief out of you, get the doubt out of you, get rid of it? And those are just, just, there's nobody, there's no one in here that doesn't have fear of some kind. Fears of all kinds that torment God does not want us to walk in fear. Fear is not of God. And yet we walk around, and when there's an opportunity to get deliverance from the fear, we don't do anything about it. We need to call it out. You can do a lot of deliverance on yourself in the area of fear, but we need to call the strong man of fear out and get free from it. And when fear is working, I promise you, your faith is not. Because fear and faith will not work at the same time. And so we walk around, we're afraid to let somebody see us get delivered from anything. I don't know what's talking about upstairs with the ladies about someone getting delivered and throwing up. I thought y'all come to my church on, on Sunday night and Wednesday night. <laughs> That's all they do. Deliverance is not a clean ministry, folks. Amen. But it sure cleans you up. Amen. And, you, and you ever, just sit and think that the more devil you get out of you, the more room you've got for Jesus. Amen. And I want you to know they do everything they can to block you from hearing from God. They will, they will bind your mind. They will blind your, your mind. They will get... I've heard people say they can't touch your spirit. Well, I don't know about that. I know they can get so close to your spirit. Well, you do get a wounded spirit, don't you? Who do you think does it? A broken spirit? But the thing is, whatever's there that's going to keep us from hearing from God, we need to cleanse this temple. Yeah. I got an hour. I'm going to go to Ezekiel, but not right now. <laughs> I tell you, you know, people will go to the doctor, have a nervous breakdown, and spend thousands of dollars and, and take all that medicine they get. But they don't want to sit down for one session to deliver, so it don't cost them anything. And I much rather sit down and have deliverance. If I say this, I'll have to, well, I don't care, I'll sit in it. I haven't been to a doctor since 1970. Good deliverance. I've kept healing. I've been healed. I had three or four times last year that I couldn't walk, but through deliverance, I was delivered from it. And what I'm telling you is that if you will get deliverance, if you, go, if you rebuke the devil and he doesn't flee, and most of the time he won't flee, you think he's going to give up easy? The Lord told me, and I guess I'm not dying. Go got to this in. I'll chase the rabbit for a minute. That we begin to call our soul back. You know, I've been teaching on the soul, been frightened and uh, removed. God showed me something about that. The devil's not going to turn your soul loose just because you tell him to. Think about it. When you cast the demon out sometimes, don't you have to put a lot of pressure on to get him out? Amen. Well, do you really think that the devil has worked so hard to get part of your soul that just because you told him to bring it back, he's going to do it? So the Lord has been showing me that, I don't know if he's talking about the Lord's one, but see, I, I'm not smart enough to know all this. So it's got to be God. I mean, after all, he said, don't you understand that you need to send the warriors when you go send after your, after your soul? The devil's got his warriors that's got your soul blocked. So you need to ask the Father to send his warrior angels to go and do, do battle and free your soul from the snares and the traps that the, that the devil has put it in. And so it's a war. It's warfare. Yes. We want to be overcomers, but we don't want to battle. And you'll never be an overcomer without getting into war, because you got to overcome to be an. Uh, you've got to overcome the enemy to be an overcomer. Amen. And I'm telling you, there's enough people here to really to do. If we really get into, I had a lady call me and tell me, uh, want me to do her praying for. Well, I don't mind praying. I like to pray. But after a long time, it's time to buy up, and she'd do her own praying. She says, but I'm not walking in that. I said, what are you calling me for then? Because you know how to pray. She says, I said, don't you? She says, yeah, but I don't walk in that. I said, well, it's not going to work for you if you don't start, start walking in it yourself. 
You know, there comes a time when God says, enough. You know, I can put feed babies, but I don't want to put a bottle in a, somebody with a beard's mouth. Do you? <laughs> they should be, times they should be teaching others. They've heard enough words, but they're spiritually lazy. But praise the Lord for what he's doing in our lives if we're willing to receive the word, if we're willing to start walking in it. Back in in Revelation, in the uh, eighth verse, the second angel blew his trumpet and something resembling a great mountain blazing with fire was hurled into the sea. And a third of the sea was burned, was turned to blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea perished and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a huge star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it dropped on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. And the name of the star is Wormwood. A third part of the water was changed into Wormwood, and many people died from using the water because it became bitter. Many people, and I I relate to water becoming bitter, is that people get bitter against God because they prayed and asked God to do something, and God didn't do it right that minute. And they begin to tell you God doesn't do it. Doesn't, I mean, I prayed. I don't know how many people have called me and said, I prayed and nothing happened. God didn't do it. God doesn't love me. God doesn't. And they go to blaming God. But you know, God has a condition for every, for every promise in this book. He said over in Mark, which is a favorite scripture on, of faith, Mark 11, he said, if you speak to the mountain, it shall be removed and be cast into the sea. But they never read 25 and 26. And what does it say? If you have any unforgiveness, any awe, any unforgiveness, God's not going to answer your prayer. And yet we think we're okay. And, and you listen, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And it may just be a little tiny bit of unforgiveness, or it may be a big one that we don't want. Well, I, it's okay, you know. When I got saved, God took care of all, my, all of it, and he did. But he says that there are things that we have to confess. And if we've got any unforgiveness against an individual, we need to make it right. We need to forgive them and ask God to forgive us. We bind the Lord when we don't forgive. We bind him from working in us. And we need to start uh, getting rid of the bitterness against God. Because of what he didn't do. I asked the Lord one time. I said, Lord, I'm so tired of people rejecting deliverance. Lord, I said, you hadn't told me a long time. Could could I just get out of it? (laughs) And I was praying that way. And praying that way. And one day, it came to me. He never said a word. He never said a word. (laughs) I said, give it to me in a dream, you know, if you can't get through my thick head. (laughs) I talked to the Lord just like, you know. I can talk to you because he knows me. He knew me when he called me. He knew what I was. And, I, and one day, one day he finally got through to me and he said, I've already told you. I'm not telling you again. <laughs> when the Lord doesn't answer, he's already told you. Amen. And I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I wanted to quit. And well, I didn't really, I just, was just, but, you know, you do get discouraged sometimes. Amen. But the Lord was showing me. That a lot of times, no answer at all is because he's already told us and he knows that we're rebelling against what he's told us to do and we don't want to do it. And we're disobedient. Everyone in here probably knows the word from cover to cover because you've been in it long enough. But are you doing it? The reason that Adam fell, he disobeyed God. And God says to you, do this. And we don't do it. And we find every reason in the book not to do it. We disobey God. And you know disobedience opens the door for the enemy to just send anything he wants to in on you. Well, he can't touch me. I had a lady tell me one time, he can't touch me. I'm cleansed. I've been born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. The devil has no right to me. And that's true. And I said, but don't you ever sin? She said, she told, it got real quiet. I was talking to her on the telephone. She got real quiet. And all of a sudden she said, well, once in a while I might get angry. I said, you liar. <laughs> hey, be honest. You know, we've got to be honest with ourselves. We lie to ourselves. And, and I got the last scripture I got is going to be in Revelation 21. Don't forget. Don't let me forget. Because it says no liar is going to be in heaven. That's right. 
and we lie to ourselves, we lie to our children, we lie to one another, and we and the Bible tells us to speak the truth in love, and we won't do it. And the Lord, this, I, I, this is what the Lord has all, always shown me, and my husband's always backed it up. <laughs> you don't help them if you don't tell them the truth. That's what he tells me all the time. You help no one if you don't tell them the truth. But you know what? We want people to like us. We want people to want to be around us. Uh, Irma was talking about upstairs, something about uh, demons, how demons, you know, don't want to come and so forth. I thought, I was sitting there thinking, I got a lady that comes in my church. She comes in now, it's just better time she comes in. And she avoids me like a plague. She goes, <laughs> if I'm on this side and if I'm on this side, she goes, and, and I'm she Sometimes she leaves church like that. But it's the spirit sin. She loves me, but the demons don't. Right. Praise the Lord. Well, let's go over to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 8. No one go to Ezekiel 9. Let's we'll talk about the stealing. This is, this is one of the scriptures that Glenn uses. And I've been studying this for a long time. And I, as the overcomer, in Ezekiel 9, when the... Let's see what verse I want to start with. Well, I start with verse 1. <clears throat> the Spirit cried in my ear in the vision with a loud voice, saying, Cause those to draw near who have a charge over the city, and every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six, six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north. And every man with his battle axe in his hand, and one man among them was clothed in linen with a writer's ink bottle at his side. And they went in and stood beside the bronze altar. And the glory of the God of Israel, the Shekinah cloud, had gone up from the cherubims upon which it had rested to stand above the three, the threshold of the Lord's house. And the Lord called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer, writer's ink bottle at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the forehead of the men who sigh and groan over all the abominations that are committed in the midst of it. And to the other he said in my hearing, Follow the man with the ink bottle through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have any pity. Stay, slay outright the elderly, the young man, and the virgin, and the infants, and the women. But do not touch or go near anyone on whom is the mark. Be, begin at my sanctuary. And so they began with the old men who were in front of the temple, who did not have the Lord's mark on their foreheads. And the mark on the forehead is the, is the mark of the intercessor. What did I just read in verse uh, 4? So, and the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city and set a mark on the forehead of the men who sigh and groan over the abominations that are committed in the midst of it. Now let's change that word city, because it was, it was talking about God's city. To the church. Let's go to Ezekiel 8 and look at it. In Ezekiel 8 and verse 3, he said, And he put forth, a, well, let me start at the beginning. And in the sixth month, sixth year of the captivity of the king, and the sixth month on the Jehoiakim, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, the captive of the Babylonians with the elders of Judah sitting before me, the hand of the Lord fell upon, there upon me. Then I beheld and lo a likeness of a man with the appearance of fire from his waist downward. He was like fire, and from his waist upward he had the appearance of brightness like gleaming bronze. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my hair, and the Spirit lifted me up between the heaven and the earth and heavens, and brought me in the vision of God to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the door, to the inner court, which face, faces toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of, of jealousy, which provoked to jealousy? God began to give Ezekiel a vision of what was in the church. And God began to talk to me about what's in the church. How God, even God's ministers compromise the word. How they will not speak it. They go in. I had a person tell me one time that they never... Uh, tried to offend anyone with, uh, when they preach well and I don't intentionally do it but I've never seen that uh, the word will offend it cuts and it divides 
And if we, if if you tell me I can't preach what I know this word says, then I can't preach to you. I won't compromise what I believe to have a place to preach. Because too many people will. Well, I, you can't go into this church because they don't believe in deliverance. Well, then, if deliverance, if I can't preach deliverance, I'm not going in. And you can't go in this church because they don't believe in Holy Ghost. So I'm not going in. I'm not. We we do not have the privilege of picking and choosing what part of the word we want. It's God's word to us, and He says. I was looking at those spirits over in the Old Testament where it was talking about the Canaanites, the Amorites, and, and every one of those work in, in, in the church today, compromise, jealousy, fear, lust. But men that get into, into and I'm telling you, I, I heard that prophesied last night that a lot of you have been called into, to the minister. If you're going after power and fame, you are in trouble to start with. Amen. Amen. If you're going, at, if you, God says He will not share His glory with another, and you must give God the glory for everything you do. But if you're going after money, if you're going to tickle people's ear, and I have seen that done, and I hate it, they lie to them. I'm not going to say anything to make them mad because they won't give money. They won't come back. Well, my Bible tells me they went out from us because they were not of us, and I say goodbye. If you don't want the truth of the word, you don't want God. And you don't want Jesus. You don't want him because he is the truth. And how can you say you don't want deliverance and you don't want the Holy Ghost and you don't want this and you don't want that when he dies on the cross to give us all? He doesn't want his people sick. But we we can't believe because there's so much unbelief in us and and there's spirits of unbelief that it stops you from believing. The church needs to get into the Word and believe it and don't care what anybody else says about it. When I was talking about I was going on with the Lord, my own sisters and brothers sisters left me because I was a fanatic. My own children made fun of me because I was a fanatic. When they called me, they said, you're a fanatic. Well, I didn't know what a fanatic was. <laughs> somebody told me one time a fanatic was somebody that believes more than you do. And I thought, well, that's not very good because they don't believe nothing. <laughs> and so I was really concerned about it. But they left because they didn't. They, somebody, uh, sisters told me that whole this morning. Yeah, they called me that too. And I said, well, I, I did become one last, uh, <laughs> last Thanksgiving. I got so drunk in spirit. I'm talking about the laughter. My husband had to finally just get me out of here. <laughs> But praise the Lord. But you see, we have got to accept all of the word. We have got to. And I want, I want you to look, as I share this with you, at, your, at the, this temple and see what's in it. See if I, I want to go to Second Kings. I believe that's the scripture I want. Second Kings chapter 16. I'm coming back here. I was looking at this thing on the image of jealousy. So I went over into Kings chapter 16. <laughs> And verse 11 says, So Uriah, the priest, built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus, finishing it before King Ahaz returned. Ahaz had sent the instructions for the priest to build an altar. And as the scripture goes on, it says that when the king came from Damascus, he looked at the altar and offered on it. King Ahaz burned his offering and his cereal offering and poured his drink offering and dashed the blood of his peace offering upon that altar and the bronze altar which was before the Lord he removed from the front of the house from between his new altar and the house of the Lord and he put it on the north side of his altar and King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest upon the principal the new altar uh, upon the new altar he said burn the morning burnt offering and evening cereal offering the king's burnt offering uh, the king's burnt sacrifice and his cereal offering with a burnt offering and offer and cereal offering and, and drink offering of all the people of the land and dash upon the new altar all the blood of the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. But the old bronze altar shall be kept for me to use to inquire of the Lord. They removed it. And 
put this ad- idolatrous uh, uh, altar in there, which was used for in the occult. But he was going to keep the bronze altar when he wanted to require the Lord. And if you'll keep reading it, he, uh, it tells you a lot about, more about it. But the Lord was showing me this, that this was, was why the, the image of jealousy was there. This occult thing was in the temple. And over back over in Ezekiel, in the 8th chapter, in verse, uh, where did I stop? 4. Said, and, when, and behold, there, there's another scripture you could, that uh, tells you a little bit more about that. And I think it's, uh, I had it written down somewhere. Ezekiel 14, 19 through 21 talk, tells you what, what they were doing there. But um, in uh, Ezekiel 8, he said, and, and behold, there was the glory of the, of the God of Israel who had loved and chosen them like the vision I saw in the plains. And then he, then he, the Spirit, said to me, Son of man, now lift up your eyes toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes toward the north, and behold, on the, on the north of, of the altar gate was that idol of jealousy, the image, in the entrance. And furthermore, the, the Spirit said to, to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing, the great abominations that the house of Israel is committing here to drive me far from my sanctuary? But you shall see even greater abominations. The church has brought, and, and when I say this, almost, people get real upset with me, and I get into this another scripture a little further down, talks about it, about the women weeping for Tammuz. But the church has taken Christmas and turned it into a mass for, for Christ? No. What they turned it into is uh, uh, Santa Claus. The Word says, make an idol, false god. And every time I preach this, people get mad at me. But, but I'll tell you this. There's, there's over in Jeremiah, it says that we're not to bring in the green tree and decorate it and worship it. And that green tree represents, and I'll give you scripture just a minute, where it talks about Tammuz, of, uh, him being resurrected or so forth, which is, is a false god. You see, we lie to our kids. Don't get mad at me. Pray about it. And you put your Christmas tree up if you want to. That's okay me. I don't have one. That's okay. And tell your kids, you be good. Santa Claus is watching you. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been good. So be good for him, goodness sakes. Who is that? Who is that? Who's, who is that taking the place of the church? Uh, the church that I left 16 years ago, 17, brought a Christmas tree in the sanctuary, the auditorium, and decorated it in, in the in the their holy place, and it broke my heart. And I didn't even know as much about it as I do now, and I still study about it. Uh, people don't want to give this up. This is looking back. To where I came from, and I, I can't give that up. That's, that's, that's a God. You know, anything that you put above God is an idol, and the church has got more idols, and we deny. It. We say, well, I don't worship idols. Ladies, is your husband your your idol? Or husbands are your wives your idols? Are your children? Are your grandchildren? I had my. I, I, and let me tell you, I had my altar in my house. You come in my house, I had this uh, old antique table, this big old uh, oval table. And I had my grandkids there. And then in one of my bedrooms, I had, I had at that time I had four grandkids. I had four walls. No, I had, I had four kids and, uh, and each one of their two, two, grand, two kids. I had all my grandkids. One family on this wall, one on this wall, one on this wall, one on this wall. But I was a grandma and I loved my kids. And I still love them, and I still, they still bring, send me pictures, but I keep them. So when the Lord got on my case about it, I put them in an album. I'll show them to you if you want to see them. I don't I hardly ever uh, bring them out because I don't, get, I don't see my grandkids very often. They're all scattered everywhere. But the Lord spoke to me one day, and he said, uh, I was preaching on idolatry. He said, why don't you tear down your own idols, your own altar? I said, my What? You know, God, I knew God knew, but I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, you've got an altar. And he says, if people don't recognize your altar when they come in, you point it out. Mm-hmm. He was right. You walk by my <laughs> grandkids. I say, you see my grandkids? And I had them sitting right there on that table where they had to walk by them. But if they didn't notice them, I'd tell them about them. And he said, you made an idol of them. He said, tear down your altar. You see, we don't call a lot of things. 
wrong that God does. You say, you're nitpicking. No. Your blood's not on my hands when I tell you. Because right. he gave me Ezekiel 2 and 3, and he said, you tell them. Right. And he said, they're stiff neck. Now, that's the scripture. I'm quoting the scripture. And they're, they're proud. And if they'll hear you, then their blood's not on your hands, and you're free from them. But if they don't hear you, their blood's not. If you don't tell them their blood will be on your hands, and if you do tell them they don't hear you, then it's not on your hands. So my job is to tell it. And I never did like for somebody to tell me something is wrong with me. <laughs> I always thought I was putting near perfect. <laughs> so God began to send this and this. But the thing is, what I'm trying to get across, and it's hard to preach deliverance because the demons will jump at you, you know. Like, you, you, listen, you better hush, you know. But I want you to know that God wants us to cleanse this house. This is the end of Part A. Please play Part B. Thank you. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you. For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the Friday afternoon service of April the 5th, 1996, of the Passover Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. The Coffees will be speaking this afternoon. This is now the conclusion of this message from Part A. I want you to know that God wants us to cleanse this house. He said, where did I stop? Verse 6, verse 7, And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, Behold, there was a hole in the wall, and he said to me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had dug in the wall, behold, there was a door. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and, and saw their pictures of every form of creeping things, and loathsome beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel painted round about on the wall. And there stood before the pictures seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense was going up in prayer to these their gods. In the temple, hidden from God, was every abominable thing, pornography, bestiality, uh, I'm, this, this is my interpretation of what's in man that we hide, that we're ashamed of, but God wants it cleaned out of us. Incest, rape, abortion, which is murder. I had two women come into our church, and both of them had had an abortion. And uh, we were trying, doing deliverance, and they didn't tell me about it. But the Lord began to show me about it as I was doing deliverance. And uh, I said, let's stop and take care of this. And they said, oh, I've already done that. But they acted like it was nothing. No repentance. No, you know, I've got to forgive me everything I did. And that's the way a lot of us are taking care of the things in our life. Instead of, Lord, forgive me. I repent. Fall upon our face before the Lord and repent of the sins that we've committed. And, and God forgives us. But until you, I'm telling you, these things we've covered up, they're in the temple. They, this, this scripture was talking about, uh, I, I wrote in the side of my Bible, bestiality, animals, it said, what did it say? Every form of creeping thing. I don't know what all was that loathsome, loathsome beast and the idols of the house of Israel painted down the wall. Some of you have, have fantasy working in you. You see lustful things, and yet you do not there. Did you know there's a spirit of fantasy that puts those pictures in your mind? And you just thought it was just your imagination or your thoughts. You see, 
God is wanting to cleanse the temple. We said, well, I'll take care of it, and I'm walking with the Lord, and all this, all this garbage is there. That we say, well, it's okay. You know, I'm filled with Jesus. But you can't feel with, be filled with Jesus if you've got all this garbage there. And he can't, you can't be in him until you get rid of the junk in you and begin to walk in the power and authority and do the, do the, become that overcomer that he wants us to be. As it's read in Ezekiel 9, we don't want the mark of the beast. We don't have to worry about it. But we do want the mark of the Lord. We want that mark. We want to be sealed and the mark of the overcomer where we have overcome the devil and all of his work. Jesus overcame him. Yes, he's defeated. And yes, he's under your feet. But you don't keep him there because you don't believe it enough. Oh, well, you, you know, if you think it rough enough on you, you'll just say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Well, he didn't go. Well, he, don't, he knows you don't believe it. The devil can't read your mind, but he's got a good network where he can find out from some of the demons in you what those demons in you will talk to the, some of his and they know what's going on. We, we, we said, well, I'm, I've got authority. Well, I'm sure you've got authority. And I'll tell you one thing, the more you use it, the stronger it gets in you. The more you, because you know why? Because you begin to really believe it. And when you really believe it, you can rebuke the devil and say, hey, you get out of here. i got news for y'all. We're, we're fighting some end time spirits. They're not the normal things that we've been, at, been dealing with. <clears throat> But you know what? God has given us authority over those things. But the beast from the bottom is, the, the bottom is pit has been opened. So how do you know? Well, I talked to some demons. You know, you know we, we don't take theology or, or, or uh, we don't take um, what they say as, as truth. But you know, it's really good sometimes when they confirm what you already know, what the Word says. And they say, just like when, this is the way I learn about the angels. Oh, I read about we had authority. We could call the angels. Listen, I thank God for my angels because the demons tell me they would have already wiped me off the face of earth and me as my angels. But the Lord had taught me to call for angels when I'm calling a strong man out of someone. I don't want that thing left loose. And I said, Father, send an angel with strong chains so when this thing comes out that he'll be taken to the bottomless pit. I said, where'd you get that? You can't send him to the bottomless pit. Jesus didn't do it. Well, Jesus hadn't gone to the cross when he said that. And you're too late to tell me I can't do it because I've been doing it for years. And the, and the demon said, get that blankety blank deep angel out of here with his chains. I said, just wait. He's going. But he's taking you with him. <laughs> you see, and, and when I've, I've had them tell me, and you said about the bottomless pit, I've had them tell me, you're not sending me where you sent that other one. I said, yeah, you're going there too. I'm not going to no pit. <laughs> I always say hide and watch because God's word is God's word. He's given the authority of demons. When you know you've got the authority, when you know and you use it. And the more you do the warfare, the more you go out and, and do, listen, do deliverance. My Bible didn't tell me that I was the only one or, or brother here was the only one going to do deliverance or doc. He said the believers are going to do it. And there's a, I want y'all to know there's enough to go around. Everyone in this building ought to be doing deliverance. Everyone, let's get them free. You know, my Bible tells me Jesus is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. But I haven't seen that church yet. He's working on us. He's trying. We're so lazy. He's trying to get us to get busy and do it so he can come back. I believe he's coming. And I believe he's coming soon. Let's be busy. Let's, Let's get our temple cleansed and then go out and preach to those around about us. I hope I'm not boring y'all. God's word is never born. It's alive. It's living. And it brings life. He said, where am I? Verse 12. Then said, he to, then said he to me, Son of man, have you seen where the elders of the house of Israel do, the dark, do in the dark? Have you seen what they do in the dark? Every man in his secret chamber of idols, pictures, for they say the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. He also said to me, yet again, you shall see greater abominations which they are committing. And then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the Lord's house. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, a Babylonian god who was supposed to die annually and subsequently be resurrected. And that's Christmas. That's what the Christmas tree and all represents. Get your concordance, uh, not your concordance, encyclopedia and look it up. Uh, in fact, get one of Glenn's books back there. Glenn's got a book back there on um, 
But Glenn's got some in his book. That's in Mr. Babylon, too. But, but he's got a book back there that he goes into some things that God has shown me about in the scriptures. Uh, and that's, he makes it real simple. It's real clear. And Mr. Babylon is good, too, that talks to you about what Christmas is. Now, let's get on the Easter Bunny. <laughs> You know, the thing that we as Christians ought to recognize that it's demonic when we see go in the store and all you see is bunnies. When you see something that people just are drawn to, you've got to know that it's demonic. The power behind it is demonic. And, and they won't let us talk. They say we can't talk about the Lord in church. We need to, there's a little book that someone wrote that tells you uh, you're right. You ought to get it. Because you've got a lot more rights than they tell you you have. But they don't want you talking about Jesus. The devil's crowd don't. But it's okay to have the Easter Bunny and all that garbage out. We need to get that out. You need to get that out from childhood. And repent of, of what you've done with your own kids. You say, man, you're digging deep. That's what this is all about. You want the seal of the overcomer. You get it out of you and then you begin to pray for the church. He began to cry out to the to God to reveal to the church people. I went into the beauty shop one one day. I'll just tell you how far gone I am and how much. Well, anyways, I was in there and this there's always somebody coming in there selling, and I don't buy and I don't give money to anything except unless they're in deliver. There's enough other stuff out there, and so I want my money, God's money, to go in where the people are getting set free. But I was in a beauty shop one Friday, and this man, somebody came in and brought some books, nice books. Uh, two of them for ten dollars, I think, or seven or something. I don't remember. And they were uh, uh, like a telephone, you know, address book. And then the, there's another one on the month, and they were really pretty. Had the, all pretty designs in them. And I thought that'd be neat. I get, I might buy them and give my daughter one. I take one. But. I always look, I learned a long time ago, that even in your Bible, sometimes you can find witchcraft and, uh, you know, the designs around your Bible. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't look in your Bible, sometimes find out, especially those family Bibles. And I looked over, flipped over to the back and looked, and it had, um, um, had a horoscope, but it wasn't the normal one. It was um, an Egyptian or something horoscope back this time. And so I said to the, I just closed it up and set the book down. I wasn't going to say anything about it. I just wasn't going to buy it. You know, I just set it back down. But, you know, somebody's always insisting to find out why why you won't do something. And said, why don't you want those books, Mildred? And I said, I don't want that garbage in my house. And they said, what are you talking about? And I opened the Bible up, the book up and showed it to them. Now I go in with my Bible. They think I'm crazy anyway because I sit on the head and I read my Bible every time I go to Bishop, which is not very often, but that's what I do. And they said, that's foolish. There's nothing wrong with the horoscope. There's nothing to it. People believe that. And these people call themselves Christian. It's in the church. And God is wanting it cleansed. We want to overcome, right? We want to be the overcomers. We want to have the seal of the overcomer. We need to begin to pray. And any time God opens the door that you can share this with someone, share it. What's wrong with that first? Because it's seeking knowledge other than from God. If you seek knowledge from any place other than from God, if you've had your palms read, if you've gone to, uh, to just uh, to a fortune teller, you know, in play, I didn't mean nothing by it. You were committed a sin and opened the door for the devil to uh, come in. You said, well, I didn't mean anything by it. Well, you may not have, but the devil did. And you might have got a real witch. Read Isaiah 57, 13, 47, 13. Okay. 47. Listen, God wants his church cleansed, cleansed, and we need to look at it like God looks at it. 47 verse 13 says, You are wearied with your many counsels and plans. Let now the astrologers and the stargazers and the monthly prognosticators stand up and make known to you and save you from the things that shall come upon you. Behold. Behold, they are like stubble. The fire consumes them. They cannot even deliver themselves from the powers of the flames, much less deliver the nation. There is no coal for warning or, or fire before which to sit. God says this, this is an abomination. Burned like stubble. And yet, people say there's n- nothing to it. Well, while I'm being nosy, burst on. Rings. 
grandmother pen. I'm telling you because I've been there. Mother's ring with all the birthstones of my family. You say, what's wrong with them? Same thing. I was in a meeting one night and a man was ministering and my daughter was being ministered to. Just grown married. And she was having some problems and, and the, the man that was ministering to her said, you're under the side of their cult. You got some occult jewelry. And she says, no, I haven't. And she just newly married. She didn't have anything but a wedding ring, an engagement ring. You know. She said, I don't. He said, yeah, it's a mother's. And I heard it. I was sitting close enough. I heard it. Mother's. It's the mother's ring or, or pen. The first one's in it. I said, it's mine. He said, I saw it on her and it's, it's brought curses on her. So my husband took them and next day when he went to work, he took them and whatever he did with them, I didn't ask and, and he didn't tell me. But we, he broke the, we broke the power of it over her. It is, it is the same as having your fortune told. It's, it's astrology and the signs of the zodiac. And these are the abominations that we walk under and that are in the church that we don't think a thing about it. And, and God is saying, get rid of it. Cleanse yourself from it. Okay, i got to hurry because we're going to do some deliverance. So. <clears throat> Let me finish it. <coughs> and he brought me into the... Uh, verse 15 says, And, and then, the, then said the Spirit to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Yet again you shall see greater abominations than these, than, than that they are committing. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the bronze altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs to the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they were bowing themselves toward the sun, the east, and worshiping the sun. Sunrise services. Oh, well, we go out to worship the Lord. They were bowing themselves toward the east and worshiping the sun. And then the Spirit said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? It is too slight a thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here, that they must fill the land with violence and turn back afresh to provoke me to anger. And behold, they put the branch to their nose, actually before their mouths in superstition worship. Therefore I will deal with in wrath. My eyes will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. God said until, and, and we have got to repent from these. God calls it an abomination. We said we didn't mean anything by it. God says it's an abomination. And Ezekiel chapter 7, and we'll get a couple of scriptures here. I want to read verse 4. says, Chapter, uh, he says, My eye will not, will not spare you, neither will I have pity, but I will bring recompense for your evil ways upon you while your abominations are in the midst of you, calling down punishments from a righteous God, and you shall know, recognize, understand, and realize that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, an evil is coming, an evil so destructive and injurious, so sudden and violent, that it stands alone, not as a secession, secession, but as only one evil. And an end has come. The end has come. The end, after sleeping so long, awakes against you. See, it has come. Turn, your turn, your doom has come upon you, O inhabitants of the land. The time has come. The day is near. A day of, not of joyful shouting, but a day of turmoil upon the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my wrath upon you and finish spending my anger against you, and I will judge you according to your ways and will recompense you with punishment for all your abominations. And my eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. I will punish you according to your ways while your abominations are right in the midst of you, and you shall know, understand, and realize that it is I, the Lord, who smites you. God said, clean it up. Get the abomination out of the church. Who's the church? We're the church. And he said that the church, when he said when we get cleansed and we pray against the abomination. You see, we have not wanted to look at things in our life. I, I made the remark, I can look and see my husband's fault. But I don't see mine. And God's saying, let's turn the spotlight on me. Let's look in me. Let's get rid of this. That's an abomination. 
Let's stop compromising the word. Let's stop glossing. Let's get the root of the demons out. Let me tell you something. You're not going to praise them out. Don't tell me you are. I wish to heaven you could. If you can, come to my church. I've got one I'd like you to do that to. Because I worked on it a long time and it's still sitting there. It has, I, I don't like it's still there. But one day it's going to go. Because the word says it. He said, well, you don't have enough faith. Well, you may be right. But I know the word says it's got to go. But they don't go just because you say boo. I will not compromise the kind of deliverance I do. I do the kind of deliverance that it's, it's, i got to say evidence. If you're not better when we get through, then you didn't get no de- deliverance. I don't care who you are. If you walk, it, it, no, no, no difference, no deliverance. Amen. Real deliverance. You get deliverance. You, you're different. You're different. And I'll tell you this. God will not separate you from your friends. If you want to keep them, you can. <laughs> God will not make you give them up. I tell this every time I do deliverance in our church. If you want to take your friends home with you, fine. They don't go home with me. I have enough of my own goes home with me. I want you to know I admit I, got, I have demons. Uh, whatever they are, I want them gone. If you see something on me, don't come up and lay hands on me. I do not want you to lay hands on me. But you can tell me about it. If you see it and I don't know it's there, I'd be glad to get let you call it off. But you're not going to lay your hands on me. The word says lay hands on no man suddenly. I was sharing breakfast this morning at the table. I said, Lord taught me this even before I got into deliverance. That not to let everybody and his brother lay hands on me. And I didn't know what he was doing because I saw so many people going. See, this is where I got into deliverance. I saw people going up to be prayed for and they were continually being prayed for but I, they never seemed to get able to walk in anything and I wanted to know Lord why aren't they receiving what they asked for and God began to show me in the spirit I began to see things on people and I thought for a while I was losing my mind you know I really did I, I said to Jim did you see that and he said no, I didn't see that I said Jim what's wrong with me nobody else seems to be seeing what I'm seeing everybody else seems to be having a great time I'm sitting back and seeing all those things on those people up there <laughs> and he would he would he would he would interpret what I was seeing and I knew what that the Lord was showing to me but I didn't know why and so God is wanting us to look at ourselves and get free from what's there. Revelation chapter 21. I said, I, I won't leave you totally depressed. I'll give you one good scripture, okay? <laughs> Reve- I, I, and listen, if you want to know what the overcomer's rewards are, read uh, Revelation 2 and 3. It talks about the overcoming. But you know, even to, to receive those rewards, there's things you got to do. There's things God says about the churches that, that they got. He, you know, he kept, he kept saying... They, if you, they have ears to hear with, well, every one of them had ears. Well, he was saying, you got to listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you and, and do what, the, what he's saying. Uh, are you lukewarm since you got saved? You, you begin to, you learn about deliverance, then you're gun to do deliverance. Now you, uh, you want to do it like, out in the name of Jesus, out in the name of Jesus. All y'all deliverers go home. Yeah. That don't work. Right. And so he said, you've left your first love. But over in Revelation 21, first, He who is victorious shall inherit all these things, and I will be God to him, and he shall be my son. <coughs> he that overcomes. I believe that the book of Revelation is a book of deliverance. I believe that within man there's a beast. I believe there's a false prophet in him, which I call a familiar spirit. And God is telling us that we need to get this out. The spirit of blasphemy. The, the spirits that came up out of the sea. The sea represents people. And by the way, that when it talks about the four beasts, I've met three of them in one woman. And they said, why don't you do deliverance like everybody else does? Why do you have to get nosy? I said, Lord, show me more because I want to be able to free people from the... For a long time, 
I want to see people free. For a long time, I would see this beast manifested on people. I would see it. And I thought it was a werewolf spirit. It looked like a, a werewolf. And I thought, well, in my smart, I thought, well, come out, you werewolf. But the Lord was showing me that beast that was manifesting, coming forth, and they would actually growl and act like a beast that would manifest on them. But I would see it in their faces. And, and as we would get it out, then there, were, there was another one that would come up. The fourth one is the worst. Because the scripture talks about the fourth beast. Now, I know in, in the things of, of, in the natural, I'm talking about spiritually, the things that are, are in man that God wants cleaned up. And I said I'd give you a scripture on the liar. Let's read verse 8 and then I'll close and we'll have deliverance. But as for the cowards and the and noble and the contemptible, I'm reading out of my Bible. If you're reading out of yours, it's, it's saying it different. And the craving, lacking in courage, and the cowardly submissive, as for the unbelieving and faithless, and as for the depraved and defiled with abominations, as for the for murderers and the lewd and adulterers and the practitioners of magic art and idolaters, those who give supreme devotion to anyone or anything other than God and all liars, those who knowingly convey untruth by word or deed, all of these shall have their part in the lake that blazes with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. God said the liars and those that say that you don't have to have deliverance better be real careful those that say that we uh, cast out devils and they call it uh, uh, doing it by you know some people say you're doing it by the power of the devil be careful because it's also you're getting real close to blasphemy because the spirit of God is what drives out demons and Jesus said in the in the scripture he said that the blasphemy, one that blasphemes the Holy Spirit. See, the whole, the, when you say that you're casting out devils by, by the devil, what does that sound like? You're taking what the Holy Spirit is doing and saying it's the devil. And Jesus said in, in Matthew 12 that they shall not be forgiven in this world nor the world to come. And if you're against deliverance, you better keep your, keep your mouth shut. Because if you don't want it, don't hinder someone else that does. God will deal with you. I don't have to. I have enough to answer for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, my husband's going to come and do deliverance for those that want it. But, though, but remember this. To receive deliverance, you got to forgive. you got to renounce the occultic things you've been in. Even if you didn't mean anything by it. By the way, how many of you ever girls ever went to a slumber party and, and operated in the necromancy? Called up spirit. It's an abomination. Repent of it. There's a, there's a lot of things that we play with that we don't know that God calls it evil. Amen? Amen. <coughs> We're not we're not nit, nitpicking. This is for your benefit, not ours. We've been through this, and we've seen the penalty. In fact, we've tasted the penalty, some of the penalty, for not being obedient to the Word of God. And all that she said to you, if you noticed, she gave you scripture for everything that she said today. This is the only way we'll preach. This with scripture. This is real. This is, this is truth. And if you're interested in serving God at all, you're going to have to you're going to have to clean your life up because these things will drive you completely, completely away from the Lord. Just like that's why we told about our son. If you don't get rid of all of it, it'll come back to haunt you, to drive you back into it. Father, I thank you for deliverance. I thank you that you love us so much that you would set us free. I thank you that you're doing a work. Even right now, you're ministering to people here in the sound of my voice. So I just thank you for doing this work today, for setting them free. I call upon angels to come in and cleanse this house right now. Take every abomination that is loose or free here, every spirit that is not of the Lord, out of this place. 
it. It'll not attack nor will it stop or hinder, even hinder the deliverance that we shall uh, administer here this at this hour. So, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I just give you the glory and the honor for setting your people free today. And we count it as done even before we begin because you have said it in your word. Amen and amen. Jesus said, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. That's scripture. That is the word of God. That's not me. If you call, if you want free, right now, call upon the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I'll break the power of every protector of demons. Everyone that's been sent in to any person here to protect a demon. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and I break his power and I call him out. In the name of Jesus, all the protectors, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I call, I call unbelief and doubt out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose them. Loose them. That spirit of doubt and unbelief in the name of the Lord Jesus. Demons come out usually through the mouth in coughing, sneezing, heavy breathing uh, in this form. The word is pneuma for spirit. It also means breath. It also means wind. And it will come out usually in that manner, in breath or wind. Come out now. Come out. All the unbelief. All of the doubt. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose them. Loose them and let them go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let them go. I, I call out all that false deliverance. The false deliverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose it. Loose this people. Come out of them. Come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let them go. Let them go. I call infirmity and sickness out. In Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Let them go. Let them go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sickness. All sickness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose them. Loose them. All diseases. All types of diseases come out. Come out in Jesus' name. All harassment. Har harassment of, this, of the man, of the woman. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. I cause uh, sickness of... Uh, uh, Kidney uh, problems, kidney failure, uh, any diseased kidney. I come on, command you, loose this people. Come on out of them. Come out in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Let them go. Let them go. I call heart trouble. Heart trouble in the name of the Lord Jesus. Heart failure in the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose them. Loose them and come out. In Jesus' name, diseases of the blood, in the name of the Lord Jesus, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, come on out of there. Let them go. Let them go in the name of Jesus. You're a liar. You're a thief. You've robbed these people and you'll not stay in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That spirit of death. Death that comes has entered in to destroy, to take your life. Death, I command you out in Jesus' name. That spirit of death, let them go. Let them go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. All right, I'm just going to read through a whole list. If I call upon any spirit that is harassing you, I command it to manifest and come out. In Jesus' name. We only have a short session tonight. I don't tell you, it can't take a long time. We've got other uh, ministers coming forth, so I'm going to read a list. The harassing demon, come out. Kidney problems, come out in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Je demons that steal your time, let them go. Let them go. I command that demon to separate you from God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, loose them and come out. Loose them and come out. That demon that separates you from the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus, curses from the mother's bloodline come out. And all of the people that had problems from their mother came down through the bloodline of their mother. All those that came down through the father's bloodline come out. All the curses that came through father's bloodline, loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. I command that familiar spirit come out in Jesus' name. The Antichrist spirit, the other Christ, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Let them go. Let them go. Leviathan. That spirit of Leviathan, that seven heads of Leviathan, I'll break your power. I command you to loose these people. Come out. Come out. Your mind wandering in the name of Jesus. All your mind wandering spirits, loose them and come out. The mind binding spirits, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Witchcraft. All the witchcraft. I break the power of the witch here in the name of Jesus. All of the witches, the witch that has come in in the name of Jesus. One has come in and uh, 
It's the wolf that's come in in sheep's clothing, that slipped in unawares. I take authority over that witch. I break your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command you to loosen this place and let it go. I break the curses you've loosed. We will not receive curses, witchcraft curses, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I break the power of the witchcraft curses that have been loosed here. I come against the curses that have been loosed against Glenn and Irma, in the name of the Lord Jesus, against the family, against the children. I break every curse that has been loosed against this family here, in the name of the Lord Jesus, against this ministry that's here. That it is under Glenn and Irma. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break the power of the curses that have been loosed here in Jesus' name. I call that hurt out. All the spirits of hurt, hurt, I call pride. Spirits of pride, loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Rejection, rejection, unbelief, unbelief and rebellion, rebellion. Come on out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Defeat. I call out defeat. I call out that spirit of unlove, that spirit that won't let you receive love in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command that unloved spirit to leave in Jesus' name. <laughs> the spirit that won't let you give or receive love. That spirit that will not allow you to receive or to give love in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I call unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Loose them and come out. I break the power of that spirit of unforgiveness in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I call upon the, the Spirit of the Most High God, whom we serve and whom we love, to come in here and, and to break the power of unforgiveness and to, and to touch the soul of every person that's holding unforgiveness right now in Jesus' name, that they may totally forgive those, those that have come against them in any manner in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And I break the bitterness, the deep bitterness off of the people in Jesus' name. I command bitterness to leave in Jesus' name. I call strife out in Jesus' name. Strife, dissension, blame in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let them go. Let them go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The bloodline, all the bloodline curses that have come down through the family line that have passed on from indivi to individuals out of the family line, in Jesus' name, I break the power of the curse. I break the power of those curses. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command them to loose this people and come out. In Jesus' name, bloodline curses. Bloodline curses that brought... Uh, even sickness and, and disease upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I call it hardening of the arteries. I call arthritis out in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Pain in the muscles. Cramps. Strife in the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose them and come out. Loose them and come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All types of uh, bone disease. Bone disease in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, loose them. I call insanity out. Spirits of insanity, loose them and come out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let them go. Let them go. Arrested development. Arrested development. That, that, that stops the mind at a given age. You've got to go. Loose the mind. Loose the mind of this people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Child abuse. Child abuse. I call that spirit of child abuse out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on out of there. Come out in the name of the Lord Jesus. Child ab abuse. All harassment. I call tumors out. All types of growth. Growths and tumors. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let them go. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Growths and tumors. I don't care where they're located. Tumor. Tumor. You've got a name. You will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. You will bow. I break the power of any tumor. In the name of Jesus, I command you to dissipate, to dry up, and come out in Jesus' name. I call that spirit out. The spirit behind it. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and LHBC online.com there are hundreds of free audio files there it's like going to bible school at home thank you